Merry Christmas. Welcome back to the channel. We have some fun to have today. This is a Junior Racer 75, 75 millimeter, 2S or 3S, little tiny FPV whoop racing drone. It is something that you can take outside. You can fly indoors or outside. You can start out with a 2S battery. If you're brand new to FPV, please, by all means, um, think about grabbing one of these because we're going to talk about the reasons why in this video, why it's a good candidate for one of your first FPV drones. Uh, there are a ton of other names out there right now. If you're looking for your first drone, there is the Emacs Tiny Hawk. There is the UR65, which I've reviewed on the channel, which is also one of my favorite smaller 65 millimeter size whoops. And most of these quadcopters are coming in at the millimeter between motor to motor. So we're talking motor to motor, this is 75 millimeter. So if you're looking to buy a quad, that's about the size of a 75 millimeter quad right here. So um, 65 millimeter almost looks like half the size of this one, which is kind of amazing. So um, it's kind of confusing online if you're going to order your first quadcopter and you're wondering you know, how big things are. If you have a pair of calipers, you can measure it right there on your desk and see how big your little quad is before it shows up. But they're all measured in millimeters from motor to motor and most of them come with the right turn rear type prop configuration. And this would be making the two front props turn toward the inside. Some of the whoops do have props out configuration which would be left turn rear. Uh, but we'll talk more about that in this video a little bit more. Typically these motors are numbered one, two, three, and four. So right turn rear, the next one up is number two, that one turns to the left. Number three turns also to the left. So in your diagonals, usually you have the same direction of prop orientation turning. Um, this particular power system on here is also one of my favorites. Um, we're looking at 1103 motors on this one, running two and three S. If you're brand new, by all means, start out on two S on this quad and then move up to 3S. And this is kind of a little uh, indoor or outdoor multi-GP style micro brushless racer. It is not a freestyle quad by any means. It does have some tumble, and we'll talk about what that is. We call it, in the FPV hobby, we call it washout. So the flight controller has basically like a hiccup because of too much outside external opposing forces, may it be wind or even a flip, or it, it finds itself a little clumsy. So it will wobble and normally it will come back to correct itself if you're in the stabilized mode. So uh, Betaflight is open source that's on here. You have a USB connector, Android style connector on the bottom of this that connects to Betaflight. So go ahead and download that if you're watching this video and we'll do some setup at the very end of this video for you. Um, and we'll talk about the receiver to put on there. If you're thinking about choosing a receiver for this quad, uh, I'm going to recommend a, a good receiver and a radio as well. And we'll just briefly touch on the different goggles here that are available in our hobby. And I'll give you some opinion on some of the newer ones that just came out, as well as some more high end ones as well, like Sky Zones. But first up, guys, let's take this little guy outside now, Envision Junior Racer 75. And let's fly it on 2 and 3S. And let's have a little fun over out in the field and uh, with a uh, somebody in a, ty a Tyrannosaurus Rex, T-Rex costume ch trying to take me out and uh, this guy threw a, a disc at this little thing. So um, some wild guys over at the disc golf course today having some fun with this little guy. So um, very small, but it, it, it does have some noise to it. So uh, if you're flying it around people, they might become annoyed with it like they did this one. So here we go, guys. Let's have some fun and let's do some flying. Okay, here we go. All right, guys, let's have some fun. We're going to fly it on 2 and 3S. This is the flight test for the Junior 75 Racer. Let's go ahead and show you both the Insta360 and that little view on the bottom left right there. That's what the FPV camera looks like. It's pretty good. It's actually the 1200 TVL version of the Cadex EOS 2. So I'm pretty happy with the VTX on there as well. It went pretty far out in the field on 200 and it didn't have a lot of breakup, even with that dipole antenna. So that means that you're gonna get good reception back to your goggles. So first and foremost, the flight characteristics of this quad. It is a cruiser. It is absolutely a cruiser, but at full stick forward, 
it has quite a bit of speed to it, so it'll move across the parking lot. It is, again, it's not really a Cinewoop in my opinion, but it is kind of a trainer style quad. It's a little heavier than what we would typically see at 75 millimeters, and there's that little tumble right there. Uh, just a little bit of extra movement with the Insta360 Go in there will cause it to tumble. So um, keep that in mind. It does have some tumble to it, but if you do crash it, the whole point of this quad is that, yeah, it's pretty freaking durable. It's pretty tough. I banged it into all kinds of stuff, banged it into my van, and I got chased by the T-Rex out in the middle of the field here in a minute. But it's fun because you can take it in small spaces. You can fly it indoors on 2S and... I, like I said before, you guys starting out, if you're a beginner in FPV, start out on 2S. And right here I'm cruising on 3S, and it gets across the parking lot pretty well. So plenty of speed, and it has an, a decent tune on it for, I feel like it's mostly tuned for racing because the sticks are not really super reactive. They're kind of slowed down and softened up. So it feels really easy for someone who's first starting out as a beginner. And there is Mr. T-Rex just hanging out. These guys are working on a new TikTok or something. And uh, I've got this uh, disc golfer guy there dressed up in his disc golf outfit. Getting ready to make a big play. And the drone distracted him. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, and, and here comes the T-Rex in for the attack. Get away. And we almost got nailed with the disc golf disc. Almost. All in good fun, you guys. We are having a lot of fun out here in the field today, and uh, everybody's out doing their thing, making videos, and so are we. So I uh, just wanted to have a little bit of fun with this little Junior Whoop, and I have to say that you can bang it around, have some fun with it, and it will definitely take a beating. So definitely one kind of worth checking out. It is pretty versatile. Let's go back to the bench, you guys. Let me show you what this little Junior 7.5 is all about. Junior Racer. All right, guys, welcome back from the flight test. I am so glad that the disc didn't hit this and just blow this little camera right off the top of here. If you decide that you would like to get an Insta360 Go, this little camera is about $200. It's more expensive than this drone. Um, but once you get a radio and a charger and batteries and all that, you're gonna spend over $200 getting this one going possibly. Um, I will give you guys a cost-effective radio to pair up with this one. It is the TX-12, there's a, a link down below for that, and the Insta360 Go if you want to do that for, make this little guy a Cinema Whoop. Um, it is a great sort of mini racer and a, a Cinema Whoop, honestly. So you can build gates also and fly indoors and have a lot of fun. Beta FPV has some really awesome gates you can get for smaller stuff like this. So uh, we have a very sturdy frame on here as well. We have sort of a, a plastic, rubber coated type of frame and there are one two three four five six seven eight struts on each of these prop guards so um, they are a little bit shallow so normally we would not typically classify this a whoop but it has so much mass under here that uh, i would consider this a whoop it also has a carbon frame on the bottom so it's kind of a hybrid combo carbon and what looks to be like an abs type plastic it might be polycarbonate, but it does have this little removable canopy here as well. And I believe it was running the Cadex Turbo EOS 2 camera on here. And we have a 200 milliwatt VTX on here as well. So um, that's also kind of nice. You can run it from 25 milliwatt. That is the lowest for racing. Most of the multi GP guys are running on 25. And then if you're out in the field flying by yourself, you can fly on 100 and you can even put it up on 200. There's a thing called Smart Audio, and all you do to open up Smart Audio to change channels, bands, and the, and the power is your sticks. You're gonna go to the left and up like that, and in your goggles, you'll see it come up on the screen, and you'll be able to go in and change the VTX power bands and channels, so that's really convenient for you. So, like I said before, this is a right turn rear prop configuration on here, 75 millimeter, we have a dipole coming out the back right there, and this is an XT30 connector. So if you're looking for 2S batteries, most of these smaller batteries come with an XT30 on it. So that's the standard out there for this size drone. Now, if you go up to a three inch and a five inch and a six inch and a seven inch type FPV racing drones, you usually have an XT60 
on there, but really it just depends on the drone. These little connectors can also handle up to about a 6S battery. Uh, we have a 3S450 here as well, and this is a Kratos style battery. I recommend these or the all line batteries. And this is an OMP hobby battery that I ch chose to fly on here too. This one's up to 650 milliamp, and I chose this one because it actually fits the strap. The strap is a little bit small, but if you want to put a 650 on here and just kind of use it as a cruiser, little cinema rig, this is the battery for that. But what a cool looking little quadcopter. It really does kind of stand out from the pack right now. And when I pulled it out of the box, I did notice that it felt a lot different as far as the materials go on this quad. And it just feels like it's like rubber coated or something. It's a really cool feeling material and it feels really durable. I'm actually pretty happy that they put this little notch right here, sort of made a little fin as well, because you can take a little tiny piece of foam. And what I usually do is I just pull a piece of foam out of the box that it came in, tie and just nip off a little tiny piece, put it right there, and then put your Insta360 Go down on top of that. And then basically what you do is you run two zip, smaller zip ties through these little holes right here on both sides, all the way around. And that will be just enough to keep this on here. Um, pretty unbelievable that it actually does work, but you'll get some pretty decent video if you do that. A lot of times I do use this foam for dampening for various different sport cams and it turns out great. So, and also guys in the box, you do get an extra set of these Gemfan 1636 quad blade props. They go on just like this and they don't have any bolts on top. Sometimes these 1103 motors, depending on how powerful the quad is, if you're running 4S, you'll have two bolts on top to secure that. But this is a 1.5 millimeter shaft on here. So if you're ordering these particular props or you're looking for any 16 size props, 1636, you wanna make sure that it's the 1.5 millimeter shaft. But these are likely not to break very often and they don't fly off. So I haven't had a problem with that. Now just underneath here, I did stow my XM Plus receiver just underneath right there and you still have enough room to run your battery strap and all you have to do is just zip tie on your antennas back here coming out the back and make sure you zip tie cut and make sure you zip tie down your battery lead as well because if it gets pulled it can pull off the flight controller or the ESCs it is an all-in-one flight controller ESC setup here an F4 flight controller if that pulls off it will break the tabs off so be very careful about that if you look just to the side right here this little quad has plug-and-play motors and it's simply a plug that plugs in and unplugs. So if you blow out a motor, it's nice that you don't have to do any soldering to hook up a new camera or a motor. So um, very nice there. And this quad also is running 12 amp ESC, so it will absolutely do any type of 3S battery. But again, if you're a beginner, start out around 2S and then move your way up to 3S. And honestly, I feel like this one flies better on 2S. Uh, it's just more of a cruiser really than, than a, a little freestyle quad. And I felt like I had more control going through smaller spaces on 2S, so that's a big benefit. But let's go ahead and put it on the scale real quick, and I'll zero out the scale for you guys, see what we got. And we'll weigh the quad by itself here. And what's also really great about this, I should have mentioned this in the very beginning of the review, but this is also on the Velocidrone simulator. So if you want to fly this one before you even buy it, you can fly it. On that simulator so 53.8 grams and let's put the 2s650 on there and then that'll get us up to 100 100 even wow that's awesome so yeah 100 even there for the 2s650 and for the 3s450 that's going to get us up to 100 point well, was, I thought it was going to 100.3, but that's the same exact weight for that one. And then for the 3S650, what's that going to give us up to? The biggest battery is going to get you up to 115.7 grams total takeoff weight. That's really good. So the first goggles that I, I can recommend are from Beta FPV. They have a pretty nice screen on here. They are very simple. You just turn them on just like that. It has an internal battery and you can charge it here with a USB-C connector and just any basically AC wall outlet for a smartphone or whatever. Um, they say not to 
charge it coming from your computer. So make sure you use an AC wall outlet. And then you have screen navigation here. You also have bands and channel. You can change through the bands and channel. And you will see all the telemetry there, the battery voltage and everything on here like you saw in the flight test. But this one does not have a DVR but they are a pretty good price. So I'll, I'll put the link down below for these, but I feel like most guys want to record their videos. So I know most of you guys already do and you upload to our Facebook page. If you're also, if you're brand new, make sure you join the drone camps, Facebook page. We have one large page that around 17,000 people. And then we have another page that's dedicated strictly to just the FPV guys. So you can look up the drone camps, FPV community, and that's, a great resource if you have questions now the next one I have here is the VR004 from Esheen and this one is cool because this detaches so you can make it a monitor a standalone monitor or you can snap it back in and use it as goggles we have diversity antennas and that just means we have two here and this one if you noticed didn't have any antenna sticking off the top so the antennas in here are built inside the goggles um, this will give you a little better reception for a little more distance but what's great about this pair is it is around fifty dollars and it does come with a dvr so you have a micro sd card slot right here and a record button on the other side press record and you're recording video so it'll record down to the avi format you pop that card out put it in your computer and then you can make your videos and you can power this with a 3s something like a 3s 2200 is usually what I use this one's a little bit bigger here. This one's a 3000 milliamp. This is just an old Turnigy battery that I had laying around, and those just plug right into the XT60 right there. And then you can power up your goggles. Now, the next choice of goggles is a set of Sky Zones. These are the original O3Os, and the O3Os are a little cheaper right now. They are binocular style goggles. So that means they have two screens here. And if you have glasses, these are great because you can put diopters in these um, whereas with these you just kind of hope that your glasses will fit inside this area and a lot of times sometimes they do and sometimes they don't so if you have a friend who has a pair of box goggles give them a try with your glasses and see if they work first before you make your purchase but the nice thing about sky zone is that you can get some diopters in sky zones um, as well as fat shark but hopefully you guys enjoyed this review this was fun and this was 100 percent for the new guys and i will give you a little bit of help at the very end of this video we'll go inside beta flight and i'll just walk you through some of the settings that i have on here and hopefully that'll help you out with your quadcopter so thanks again for watching my drone camps channel guys check this one out on the velasa drone simulator app super super cool for fpv simulation and finding out if you really want to fly fpv but thanks please subscribe guys and enjoy the last part with beta flight i'll see you on the next one all right guys so we're going to go ahead and download beta flight first if you're brand new to fpv this is what mostly everybody uses so go ahead and download beta flight and copy that to your applications folder if you're on a pc make sure that you download drivers also install those and restart the computer before you try to hook up a usb cable to your quad so on the envision the usb cables on the very bottom so we're going to go ahead and plug in the usb cable and you should see usb come up so i'm going to do that again i'm going to disconnect and turn off auto connect you will see usb modem here when you see it active so i'm going to unplug it real quick and i'll plug it back in just to show you that it says Bluetooth first, and then you should see, once USB loads, just give it a second, and then hit connect. Uh, what I do a lot of times is push auto connect there, and I leave that checked, so it just automatically goes into beta flight. Really important that you need to use a data cable as well, so some guys can't connect to their quad because they're not using a data cable. So when you come in, the first thing we need to do is check configuration, and if your quad is all turned around to one side, and the rear is not facing you you can hit reset z axis and that will bring the quad facing you uh, with the rear facing you make sure that you're holding it just like this so we're going to check front down back left and right make sure all those axes look right here so if it's not set up correctly from the get-go 
most of these quads are set up with the default just like this. So um, a lot of these binding flies come pre-configured. If you're building your own quad, you need to get flight controller orientation set up right. Um, and I'll show you where that is in the orientation, uh, in the configuration tab here. So we're going to also check enable expert mode. Now you see more tabs over here on the left hand side. And the first thing we'll do is we can check the ports. And this quad only has two UARTs on there. So serial RX is checked because we're using SBUS. If you're using an SBUS receiver, it, such as XM Plus for Tyrannus radios, you need to make sure that serial RX is checked. Um, so if you make any changes here, you want to save and reboot. So we're on the first tab, which is the UART1 here. That's where my SBUS signal cable is actually soldered to on the flight controller. So um, that looks good. We're not using UART2, so uh, well, for the exception of VTX, which is smart audio enabled, which is great. So that does mean they have a wire soldered to that for communication for changing bands, channel, and power on your quad. So that is your VTX on UART2. So now we're going to go down to configuration. Um, save and reboot if you did make any changes, but uh, hopefully you didn't because this quad's pre-configured. Now we're going to go down to configuration, and this is the Quad X configuration. This is an X style quad. It is set up to right turn rear configuration. This is the classic configuration for most FPV quad out there. Right turn rear, next motor up is left, and usually diagonally across is going to be the same direction. Also left on motor number three. Motor number four, diagonally across from one, is going to be right turn. So we have a props in configuration in the front here. But right turn rear is all you need to remember right here because that'll help you out with your standard default. And that prop will be turning to the right. Now DSHOCK 600 over here in the ESC features. Motor shot, make sure that's turned off. This would be turned on and that means that when you turn on your throttle, it will go from zero to throttle. We wanna make sure that's turned off because when you arm it, when you arm the quad, you wanna make sure that your motor spin up and that's basically what we call air mode at about 10%. Um, you can also activate air mode down here, which it is in the other features, but we'll get there. So hang with me, motor stop off. And now motor idle set to five. We had some desyncing issues years ago and we had to um, adjust these values, but this is all good these days. So down here as well in the system configuration section, uh, we have barometer checked on for default on this flight controller for some reason. Go ahead and turn off barometer and magnometer because this quad is not using either of those. Now we're not gonna save and reboot just yet. We're gonna make some more changes here. Arming, you wanna make sure that's set to 180 because that'll enable you to be able to arm the quad no matter what angle it's at. Um, and this will enable you to use turtle mode. So make sure that's 180 there. And camera angle, we're gonna leave that the same there. That's fine. Personalization, you can change this to whatever you want. Your, your FPV pilot name, I'm gonna leave it at Envision there. And down for the receiver tab, this is serial-based Specsat SBUS receiver. This is XM Plus receiver, that is correct. And we were using PWM, um, SPI, we're not using that as a built-in type of receiver. SBUS is what we're selecting for the serial receiver provider. And you can also go in here and select iBus if you guys have FlySky and Crossfire is CRSF here. Spectrum, there are a few different types of Spectrum receivers here. Um, FrSky F port, but we're going to leave it on SBus because that's what I have on here. So other features, not using GPS there. Uh, we're going to leave LED strip on. Air mode, we're going to leave that on. OSD on, of course we want that, and dynamic filter. RX loss and set right here. It's the D-Shock beacon configuration. That's basically your ESC beeper. So leave those both on. That'll allow you to set a beeper on a switch. And even though we don't have a physical beeper, the ESCs will chirp in the grass. And all this beeper configuration down here, they always have this defaulted check on. Leave that. And now we're going to go ahead and finally save and reboot for the configuration tab. So now it should bring you back around into it. And let's go down to power and battery. And minimum cell voltage, 3.2, that looks good. 3.2 on warning cell voltage, and you can leave max the same at 4.3. Now we're going to hit save here after you make changes. 3.2, 3.2, that's all you need to know there. Now fail safe, we're going to set it to drop because we don't want it to fly away at the last throttle value. 
if you lose signal. Um, in the old days, that's what would happen unless you set up your fail safe. Um, you also don't want it to land because that could put us down in a, in a puddle or maybe a pond at the worst case scenario or the ocean. Um, all that looks good. Go ahead and save and reboot. Come back in and we're going to go down to PID tuning. All this is defaulted from the factory. The tune is on here, so multi-GP. Um, the squad has been reconfigured, but the tune could be a little better. Um, we're not going to go into that today, though. And receiver. This is where people get confused because if, if you're looking at this and none of these bars appear to be moving when you have your radio on, um, there is kind of a, a, a duality here with setting up the receiver tab. Okay, Duality is that this could work in two different ways. Sometimes the receiver on the quad will power up with the USB cable power only. Other times you need to plug in a battery. So even on some of the, the whoops, most of the whoops will power up using an, an onboard SPI receiver, which is built into the flight controller. So now that I plugged in a battery, you might have heard that this is a little 2S battery and you can see the, these bars moved over. That means that my receiver is active and when I move my sticks, now you'll see these channel maps moving and these, each of these are called channel maps so y'all you want to make sure it's going left and right and if things are backwards here that means you need to go in and change it inside your radio to be moving the right direction and so uh, that would be a different video but it is the weight so you're going to change the weight inside from say uh, 0 to 100 or 100 to 0 depending now it looks like this battery may have just stopped working. So I'm gonna plug in another battery here and get my maps working again. That battery was at the end of its life. So y'all, you want left and right just like that. And on the same stick on the left, your radio, push up for throttle, up and down, should look like that. Just below a thousand there, looks good. All the way up to about 1800, that's good. Now right stick is your aileron, is your roll. Left and right should look like that, and then pitch should be forwards and backwards, just like that, okay? And now resting around 1500. So your switches are your aux channels, and this would basically be 1, 2, 3, 4, channel 5 is your aux one, channel 6, 7, 8, right there, okay? So inside your radio, on channel 5, you want to activate aux 1, aux 2, 6, 7, and 8, okay? so. We're going to go ahead and test out my arm switch, which would be aux 1. That's that long, tall switch on the left of your transmitter. SE is where I put my modes. And SC is where I put my beeper on the right-hand side of the radio. And then SD is where I have my flip after crash recovery, which is turtle mode. So all that looks pretty good there. The channel map over here, this tab can be changed. If you're using Crossfire, a lot of times it's T-A-E-R, 1, 2, 3, 4. Um, for the default, for all you Tyrannus guys, it's AETR. And now after you make changes, click Save. And just to show you real quick, if I'm flying Crossfire and I click Save there, see how everything is out of whack? Um, everything is out of whack now. So um, you can see pitch is back. It should be even with all of these. If that's not right, you need to change this tab. You can also, again, like select here and type out what it looks like in your radio. So. Um, that's something that a lot of you guys will have to come to understand a little bit later. But I showed you how these move in the very beginning of this, this speech about this uh, receiver tab. And hopefully you guys um, soak that in like a sponge. So we're going to go down to modes now. And we're going to set our arm on aux 1. If you need to figure out where your switches are, which aux is which, so if this is set to auto here and you don't know what's going on, um, you can move a switch if it's set on auto, any switch, and it will automatically grab that stick, which is kind of crazy if you move it on your radio. So I want it on aux 2, so I'm going to move it back to aux 2. And just to double check, you can go back to your receiver tab and look and see, move your switch, and you see that it is actually aux 2. So my mode switch, I want there. The first thing we have is angle mode. After we arm, we're going to be directly in angle mode. So we want that. That is stability mode for the guys that don't know. The next mode up is horizon, and I'll just go ahead and delete that just in case it's not active on your quad. We're going to go ahead and click add range, not add link. Click add range, and you see how it's kind of long here? 
grab these two tabs and slide them in to make it a little nice and neat here. And also you don't want to overlap here from this tab to this tab. So I'm going to click save after I made my changes. I'm going to scooch that one in a little more just because I can be OCD about this. So now my switch facing all the way away from me is in angle mode. Now second position toward me on that aux 2 switch. Now I'm in out horizon mode. It just helps you come back to level after a flip and it will actually allow you to do flips, whereas angle mode will not. Now all the way out, free floating out here, that is acro mode. And there is no tab for acro mode. So if you're looking up and down here, there's no tab for acro. So that's where a lot of beginners get confused. So free floating is acro. Now you're in horizon and now you're in angle mode. So it's always fun to take off an angle mode if you're a beginner. And you should see this go red when it's armed. Okay. So now beeper is aux three and that is my long stick on the right hand side. And you'll hear it start beeping. These are the ESCs because I do have a battery plugged in. So we're going to click save there. And you can scooch this over if you want it on the you know second position, uh, but don't scooch it all the way over there because as soon as you turn on the quad, it's going to start beeping at you. So we're going to move it back to there so it's at the third position over, all the way over. Now the next switch over is going to be SD, and that's on the AUX4, flip over after crash, which is also known as turtle mode. And you have to disarm to be able to use this. Disarm and then activate this mode and then rearm for turtle mode to activate. And then once you flip the quad over, you disarm again, move the switch back to normal mode, and then you're out of turtle mode and you can take off again. So it takes a little bit of playing around a few times to, to get turtle mode straight. Now we look good there, we're gonna go down to, uh, let me show you the motors tab real quick. If you wanna, if you're building your own quad, this is where you'll test motor direction and you can use BL Heli Suite to be able to change motor direction on your ESC. So enable that and then you can test per motor with a battery plugged in. Uh, make sure you take your props off and use painter's tape as a little flag to see which way your motor's direction is rotating. So I'm gonna uncheck that we're gonna go out of here down to OSD and this is where it gets fun because this is your own screen display and you can grab and move things around and if you want it there you can just hit save and then it'll stay there you can plug in a pair of goggles and check to see where things are on the screen you can see how there's a space here this is a dead zone beneath my sky zone goggles so if I move this down here one line I'll be off the screen so something to check on your goggles same thing up here check where your top line is uh, before you go into the black up there and go ahead and save that. And a lot of times this is all the information I want on the screen. Um, you can see that things highlight if I hover over it. This is the fly mode. This is timer number two down at the bottom. I don't use timer number one. This is the time it's armed from, uh, from arming. You want that, not the time the battery's plugged in. That's timer one. Now VTX channel up at the top shows me race band. I'm on uh, channel two there at 200. And we can turn that on and off. You can see it disappear. RSSI value, we have throttle position. I like to see a lot when I'm making videos for you guys. That is this little guy right here. And it just defaults to 69 there. Um, and this is your battery voltage. You can also chant, turn, change, turn on more stuff here if you want battery current draw. Um, you can go crazy with battery information, but usually I just like to see the milliamp drawn from the battery and the main battery voltage. That's very important. So we'll click save there. That all looks good. And you can change fonts as well in here in the font manager if you want to. Uh, but we're going to leave this all to default. If you want it bold, a little bolder, you can do that. And it'll look more like this. Uh, but we're going to go ahead now. And if you want it like that, go ahead and click save. We're going to go ahead now down to video transmitter. You can go in here and you can change things here uh, for default power to be 200 when it turns on. And that's nice. Uh, pit mode if you're racing this little multi GP guy, which means that you can make changes inside beta flight without drowning everybody else around you. Um, if you're not, you know, if you're not, if you are racing, do 25 milliwatt. If you're not racing, you're out in a big field, do 200. And then don't forget to click, click save. Now we're going to go down here to CLI and we're going to type version here. And this battery might be on the way out, but we're going to type version and hit return and it shows you what version of beta flight on here STM 32 F411 and August 16th 2020 that looks good now all the changes that we just made on your quad we want to make sure we save those so we're going to type DUMP dump 
and hit return and then all these values on the flight controller are going to come up so um, to make a backup of that you want to go ahead and click save to file and now we're going to save that to the desktop and you'll see envision on your desktop or wherever you decide to save it if you make a special folder for it you can also do that but that's pretty much it for the the you know the quick setup on the jumper 75 hopefully that helps you guys in the camps channel a lot of times i try to bring extra information to you guys and really help you out if you're a beginner so um, a very beginner friendly channel and that's what the camps primarily all about is getting new guys into the hobby and also showing you guys the latest and greatest um, and speaking human speak when it comes to learning the art of the fpv so i appreciate you guys all hanging out with me and uh we're going to go ahead outside now and do some flying. So happy flying and FPV, everybody. Uh, please do subscribe on the channel. That would be awesome. I really appreciate that. Take care, and I will see you on the next one.